What's up guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today we're gonna to be installing equal length aftermarket headers and a catless J pipe on this 2018 WRX. Already has a catted J pipe and a cat back exhaust, but we're changing things up a bit. And uh, it's gonna sound pretty gnarly after the end. Um, these are 1320 equal length headers that we got off eBay and same thing with the J pipe. Install shouldn't be too difficult. Um, we'll show you everything that you need to do. And uh, yeah, it's gonna sound pretty gnarly, so stay tuned till the end where you hear this thing and hear it snap, crackle, and pop. All right, guys, so to give you a summary of what we're gonna do today, in order to replace the headers on this, we're actually gonna have to drop the header and the turbo as one unit and then separate them on the bench afterwards. There's just no way to get to where the header actually is fixed to the turbo on the, uh, you know, on the top side. So we're gonna have to remove the exhaust and remove the everything on the intake and charge pipe side. Uh, one thing Freddie didn't mention, you'll kind of see as we go, is that we are doing um, a Grim Speed charge pipe as well. So that'll just kind of go in uh, as we have our, everything apart. All right, so we're gonna start by taking everything off on the intake and the charge pipe. Yeah, that's yeah. not the intake, that's the turbocharger bracket, so no. No, this is the intake. No, no, it's the turbocharger. I'm removing the intake. Where's the bolt go into? Huh? What's the bolt, bolt go into? Into the turbo. I well, said right, so it's the turbocharger. The is, the in, is the turbo the exhaust or the intake? Yes. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, so we got this overly complicated intake piping thing off, and this is the boost control solenoid. So we're gonna be swapping that out with the Cobb uh, electronic boost control solenoid, the 3.3 port version. So what are you working on, Brad? All right, I'm gonna get the two bolts off for the charge pipe and try not to bust my knuckles. Uh, I already did a couple of test nuts here to see how they were gonna play. And with the map torch, they were uh, pretty easy. So we're gonna continue with that method. Um, but you're gonna need to remove this plate up on the top. There's a 12 millimeter bolt up here and a 14 millimeter bolt in the back and a 14 millimeter bolt right here that you're gonna have to access from the top. And then once that is out, you can unplug both O2 sensors, pull this plate on top, which you're gonna see me do next. Then we can get. To, then you would get to these four bolts that hold the J5 on. All right, so I went ahead and pulled the, uh, I guess the upstream O2 sensor out to give me some clearance. And I'm using the uh, heat shield that was here just to keep from getting the torch from hitting the belt. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this nut off and then we're gonna work around to the difficult one. Definitely gotta get the nut off. Huh? Definitely gotta, gotta get, get your nuts off. off. Oh yeah, I gotta get my nuts off. get the ground strap off and then we'll move to where uh, the J-pipe connects up to the cat back and we'll get that off and we can pull the whole thing out. Yeah. Okay, so this J-pipe actually has a third O2 bone for running a wide band um, and I have that installed on this car so I went ahead and already loosened this same way we did the front O2. This one has to come out because there's no plug for it. I can't unplug it further up. All right, I'm not gonna mess with this union right here because this whole piece is just gonna come off and I have, when you order the um, 1320 Performance J-Pipe from eBay, it actually comes all the way back to here. So I'm gonna replace this gasket and I'm gonna sever it from here and pull the entire piece off. This is really what's holding it on. 
Mm-hmm. You got it. I got it! Yeah, that this part's really nice where it, it hooks on it, so it holds it there. That's super nice. Make my day. It's like peeling off a scab. Yeah, it literally is. You can fix the super with these. Take it from me and Freddy. I'm sure he's mentioned this in many different uh, videos before. Don't bother using these. They don't work. They suck. I wanted to just go ahead and use it because I had. This is all I had, and they look so promising when you get them brand new. Yeah, they look nice. They're they're thick, so like they would fill up a gap real nice, but they just blow out. Yeah, look at that. Like that looks great, but this is what you're going to get. I mean, it was like this when I put it in. This is what I just took off, and it's probably got like 20 or 30,000 miles at most. These are garbage. So, is the OEM Super Gasket one of those? Like one of those, or is it a solid piece of steel? Solid. Okay. Multi solid. Multi layers. Yeah. yeah. MLS. Yeah. So those those are graphite. They're fucking trash. Yeah. This is what we're going to be putting on. Multi layer steel. Yeah. That is what you want. And they're reusable usually. Yeah. I I reuse all my Toyota multi layer gaskets except the head gasket. Vent. I believe this is a vent because when you pop this off, there it doesn't flow anything out of it, but it is oil. Um, and this is where you would install the. Uh, oil sump restrictor, which is what I have installed right here. So I, this is a highly recommended and very easy mod to do uh, when you're going with an aftermarket J pipe, especially if you go catless, uh, to keep that blue smoke down that comes out of the exhaust when you go that route. So uh, I have this already installed, so that gives me an easy place. I'm gonna go ahead and take this worm gear clamp off here, and then I'll be able to separate that hose. Um, if you're doing this, just get it, and then you can cut that hose like I originally did and install that mod, and it'll make it easy, because you don't want to mess with this. If you mess with this, you might as well just go ahead and get the kit and replace it, because these are kind of one-time clamps, and they don't like to play nice. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it here, and we'll move on. And then next one I'm going to pull is the oil drain. I'm gonna pull it from the top so that I can bring it down and let it drain. And I have this wonderful telescoping catch bin. If you want one, Freddie will make you one. <laughs> but it's more than you can afford, pal. It's literally just buckets and PVC rigged together to make a telescoping catch so I didn't have to buy one. I know this is very difficult to see, but I'm trying to get the other coolant hose on the top. And it's difficult to get to. Uh, as soon as I crack it, it's draining. All right, so we got everything disconnected from the turbo, and now we're going to move on to the three nuts that secure the header and the turbo assembly to the block, to the head. And then this is actually the oil feed line, and I forgot about this. So, two 17s, get that off. Don't drain that much oil. <sighs> All right, so now that we have the turbo and header together off the car, uh, we're gonna go ahead and take some of these heat shields out of the way 
uh, so we can get to the bolts that fasten them together. So we are gonna be reusing this heat shield. So you do want to, uh, you know, don't beat it up too bad. Um, but everything else, this header and the heat shields that are on them, you're not gonna be reusing. So it's not the end of the world if one of these don't come. Some of these are pretty rusted. So I don't know how they're gonna, if they're gonna come apart or not, or if they're gonna break, but we'll get it apart and then uh, we'll go from there. Take it out. <laughs> Whoa! Is there an event going on? Ugh. No. That. Nope, strip it right off. You okay? Yep. All right, let's put the real stuff on here. Seafoam deep creep. Yes, that is the good shit. They're probably gonna need torch too. <laughs> Bye-bye, crappy headers. All right, so we got everything off. We had two, see these are cold, yeah. Two studs come out with the nut, so scrap them. And two new ones in. Um, they seem to be, and they appear to be, the exact same stud and nut for the J-pipe on the other side, which makes sense. I couldn't find the part number. I could not find them looking for this you know, looking at the specific header to Turbo Union, I couldn't find exactly what it was. Like no one had it labeled that way. They all had it labeled J-Pipe. So I just bought double of what I needed for the J-Pipe side. They appear as far as tooling and thread pitch all to be in length, all the same. So these are J-Pipe studs and they go in there perfectly. So we're gonna send them, uh, we're gonna use it with them. And then we're gonna reuse the, uh, or get a new gasket for it. Yeah, I forgot the goggle bracket. All right, heat shield's back on. Headers are installed. Uh, all new studs and nuts. Um, and we got new gaskets ready to go. Cute little foxes. So I'm gonna go in and actually get the charge pipe stuff that I was that I mentioned all taken care of while I got room, and then we'll put this back in the car. All right, so we're gonna throw the turbo and header assembled back in. I got these IAG copper exhaust nuts, uh, six pack of them to replace the ones that were there. I did not have any problems with the studs that come out of the heads, so uh, put a little anti seize on it, and we're throw it back together. ahead and got the uh, oil sump line hooked back up and uh, the coolant line on top, coolant line on bottom. The oil feed is a hard line over here. Got that hooked up and the oil drain. Everything's all hooked up. Uh, got the clamps on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and release the coolant line clamps and make sure we don't have any leaks at least so far. Next thing is hook up the charge pipe and then put the um, 
intake little piece on, the overcomplicated intake multi-port plastic tube. So if you've done this before, you probably already know this, but this little thing is perfect because you can hook the exhaust here at, and you can slide it over the studs in the front. So it'll hold it up there for you if you don't have any help. So we got the exhaust buttoned up and the car is back on the ground. Brad is doing some stuff under the hood. He did a charge pipe and some other things. Once the car is buttoned up, we'll get it outside and let you hear it.